Let's talk footstops. These are the little things that you can find on a lot of LDP or downhill boards. They come in all shapes and sizes and help you to either feel more locked onto your board or just give you a good pointer where your foot on the board is. Uh, these are not mandatory and I didn't like them at first, but after some testing I found some that work for me. But did you know that designing and making one is actually pretty easy and also pretty cheap? Let me explain you what software I use and the simple steps you need to follow to create your own one. So there are lots of modeling softwares and one software you can actually use for free for personal use is Fusion 360. It's probably a little more complicated as a modeler, but for what we are going to attempt, I think this is pretty easy. So let's open the software. I'm going to explain you what I will do. Let's ignore that. So we want to create an object from a sketch and there are two ways we can make this happen. Uh, let me just show you how I would do that. So these are other things I'm designing just for fun. And this is a new one. So let's start here by creating a sketch. We can choose a, a layer or let's say a surface where we can make the sketch. And I'm just going to go for the ground in here. You can navigate this with pressing the middle mouse button, but you'll get used to the navigation pretty fast. So when we want to design something, it makes sense to think how you want to construct it before you actually construct it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a very simple footstop and I'll start by adding a circle. And this circle has the diameter of 5.1 millimeters. Why 5.1? I will 3D print this thing and to fix the footstop to the deck, I need a hole for the screw and the screw is about five millimeters thick and I'm adding a little bit extra because when 3D printing you're adding material so the tolerances have to be a little looser to make actually the screw fit. You will see what I mean when I print the product. So let's go 5.1 millimeters for the diameter of the screw hole. Then I want to use a washer on top just because it distributes the force from the screw a little bit better. So this one is about 16 millimeters. Let's do that. 16 millimeters. So this is the hole for our screw. This is for the washer and everything around that is for our actual footstop. Now let's make this thing a little thicker. 20, let's go for 23. Yeah, this looks fine. So 23 as well. And um, I know this is a little confusing right now, but follow through. For the next thing, we are going to use another circle. Just, well, let's say make it three millimeters. Why am I doing this? You will see later. There are a lot of cool tools, tools with Infusion. So one, for example, is the circular pattern where we can copy something. And what I'm going to copy is this. And now we also have a selected object. And now we select a center point. And the center point is the center point. Not that hard. And now we have a field where we can enter the quantity. Now it's three. We can also do four or five. And I think you're already seeing what I'm getting through here. So let's just increase the quantity. Yeah, this looks good. 16. Press enter. And now we have this thing that looks a little bit weird, but you will see where we're going with this. So I can mark everything. And by pressing the button E, you will see something will happen. E is the extrude. I'm holding shift and using the middle mouse button to change perspective. You could also use something like this here. And see, for example, the top or the side, whatever you want. But we're using the top, the home 
view. So now we're going to extrude this thing. Basically, we're taking a sketch and making it into an object. And I want my footstop to be about two centimeters high. So 20 millimeters will be inserted here. 20 millimeters. And see what we got here. This is looking like a footstop, but we're not finished yet. We can do some cool thing by going into our sketch, showing it again, and we need to do another thing. This one is the hole for our screw, and we actually need this. So what do we do? We take the sketch and... Uh, no, this is not working like I want to. <laughs> okay, let's do this again. So, uh, no, let's, let's do this again. Right, there's something wrong, finish sketch. My bad. Okay, so we're going to go for, go for the sketch again. And in here, we can also, by selecting that circle, extrude this one. And what we want to do is, we want to cut the hole for a screw to the object, so we can actually put something in there. And I can do this by just dragging. And as you can see, here are multiple options. We want the cut. You could also say, let's join them and have it like this, but this is not what we want. So we go for the cut operation. And as you can see, we now have a hole in there. The second thing we want to do, I want to have the washer not protruding from the object. So mark the inner circle press E and let's go for one for 12 millimeters uh, 13 that's still too far let's go for 8 yeah 8 looking fine and there you actually have it this is when we make the sketch invisible this is a footstop we could use on a longboard now you can do all kinds of things with that. But this is some very simple geometry. So I'm going to leave it at that. So we can save it. But what we want to do is we want to go to File and Export it. And from here you can choose STL. STL is basically a format most 3D printers can handle pretty well. So I'm going to call it Simple Footstop. and export it. That was easy. So now we have our STL file and we can do a couple of things with it. I would go for a 3D printer, but you can also, for example, get it CNC milled. So you have this thing made out of metal. I have tried a service called PCBWay for that and they built me this thing. Yeah, I'm going to make a video on that soon, so stay patient. So this would be another option. I think they also can do 3D printing right now. I would just ask someone with a 3D printer for that. It's the easiest way. For material, there is a material called TPU, which is flexible and when having enough infill, so the amount of material or the density of the material, uh, this will be very solid. I'm going to print this with TPU using my Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, which at some point I will make a separate video on that to print this thing. Let's have a look at it. So I inserted my object into the slicer that basically prepares the code for uh, the code, the object for the 3D printer. And here you can see how this thing looks. I am going to turn it. It does that so automatically. So we have the easiest way of printing it. So this can be then be clean on the plate. And from here, we could basically just go around and print this thing. I'm going to use slice plate. Now it's done. I have, when you go to strength, uh, no, this is an issue. So infill, this will be 100%. I messed that up. Yes, this is okay. Now this is looking fine and we have to slice it again. Perfect. So this will about be 10 grams of material, costs of this thing, and in total it will take like half an hour to print this. 
Let's actually do this then. I think everything here is fine. And we go for print plate. So now we can make a transition. This is my printer that is standing on my desk. And you will see what it takes to calibrate a 3D printer for such a little object. So there's a little bit of extra material. Oh, let's actually take this off. Good. And now this thing does a little auto calibration. Yeah, this is a weird thing that they do to calibrate the printer, but printing with a bamboo lab is just so easy. I think they know what they're doing. I actually had two other 3D printers before, and 3D printing was never easy before. I actually never had a 3D printer being that easy. So, if you want to get one, I can only recommend Bamboo Lab. Not sponsored, by the way. So, it does a couple of things, like heating the nozzle so the filament can actually melt. And that's what's taking a little. And the cool thing is, for such easy geometries, you don't have to do a lot of calibration or other stuff. You can pretty much do this print with basically any printer. As you probably hear, this thing is really quiet and pretty damn fast. And for under 200 euros, it's a steal in my opinion. Okay, there we have it. Let's actually... Let's pull this thing off. Or not. It's actually pretty sticky. Okay, I'm going to remove the plate. And let's see if we can pull this thing off. Huh? You know, I could let this cool off, but that's like half the fun. Ah, we almost have it. There we go. Let's reattach, reattach this. Oops. And here we have our finished result. Now, let's take a screw with our washer and try to insert it. Fits perfect. And with a little bit of pressure, it fits in here as well. It is a little flexible at the top, but very solid at the bottom, and can be used as a perfect footstop. Nice! Well, as you can see, this was actually pretty easy. This thing works like a charm and feels very good on my board. But I would like to present you another way of designing a footstop, which allows you to do a little more complicated shapes and it's really not that difficult. So let's hop back into Fusion. Okay, I'm going to build another model and uh, see if you can figure out what I'm doing here. Can you guess what it is? When I press the finish sketch function and go for the revolve, you will get it immediately. Choose an axis and there we have it.
a rook, but this one is not functional. Let's actually make it that way. I do that by using the sketch that I already have and editing it. No, we don't edit it. We do another sketch. My bad. Take this top layer. Perfect. And we do something in the middle, which is our hole for our screw. And from here, we're going to make another. Uh, does it fit in here? 16. This actually works. Let's make this 60 millimeters. And now we're going to do another little trick. We're going to take this in the middle and build this triangle here. What does this do? You will find out just now. I'm going to choose a circular pattern. Choose our triangle. And for the center point, let's go with the middle. And you can probably guess what this will do. I go for four, press enter. Now we can do a couple of cool things. At first, let's choose our inner circle. Press E, have the negative extrude, and there we have our first hole. But we're not done yet. We're going to have another one, but this one will not be as steep. Press E again and have it 8 millimeters down. Suddenly we have this, and now we can also choose these press also E and cut these one as well. How deep do we want them? Uh, like this should be fine. And now we actually have a pretty cool rook that we can use as a footstop. Let's actually do the same thing again. Export STL file rook footstop. Okay, as you can see, this one is working. Let's see if we can auto position it. It does basically nothing. So for the infill density, I think I'll try 75% this time. Yeah, let's just go for it. It's a little bit too high, but that should work. Let's actually take a look at this thing. Can I just pull this off? <laughs> hmm. Let's get this plate off and see if I can just move it. Ah, there we have it. Nice. Put this like here, and here we have the footstop. And it looks good. Let's actually try if we could put a screw through there. So I put this plate in here, and it fits. And now we can simply add our screw in there. And uh, yeah. Turns out, we actually have a footstop. Nice! I'm glad this worked out so well. Yes, you can see this one was actually pretty easy and you can make some pretty cool geometries with that. I also have another footstop. I actually have a couple of other things that I just 3D printed. But it's a lot of fun. You can start basically for free. And if you find someone who can do your prints, you will actually not pay a lot. There are services for that and they are also not that expensive, especially when you produce a couple more. So I would say just go for it and make your own. I hope you enjoyed this little longer video. And if you're into making your own gear or experiments, feel free to subscribe to the channel. 
and see you in the next one. Bye.